Your physician has recommended chemotherapy, and I'm sure you have some questions about what to expect. In this video, we will discuss some of the most common side effects of chemotherapy and go over some tips on how you can feel your best during your treatments. What we review today will be general information. Before your first treatment, your doctor or nurse will give you additional information on the medications you'll be receiving. The most important piece of information for all of our patients is to call us if you're experiencing anything new or different. Whether I cover it in this video or not, any changes from how you normally feel should be reported. Always feel free to call us. Let's begin by talking about your immune system. During chemotherapy, your white blood cells can decrease, which makes it harder for your body to fight off an infection. The number one thing you can do to prevent catching an infection is to wash your hands. We encourage our patients to wash their hands often, especially after being in a public place. Hand sanitizer is another great option when you don't have access to soap and water. In addition to washing your hands, you want to be careful about interacting with others. If you know that someone is sick, try to keep your distance. If someone you live with becomes sick, limit direct contact as much as possible. For instance, sleep in separate bedrooms and don't share food or drinks. For the people outside of your home, we would ask that they don't visit you when they're sick. If you do develop signs of an infection, please call us immediately. If caught early, we can treat most infections at home. Please call your oncology team if you develop any signs of an infection, such as a cold, cough, urinary tract infection, skin rash, or a fever of 100 degrees or greater. Now let's move on to your energy levels. I use the example for our patients of a car. You're the car, and your red blood cells are your gas, or your get up and go, so to speak. The amount of gas in your tank can fluctuate during your treatment, but just like your car, your body needs more than just gas or red blood cells to run. Sleep, water, and food all fuel us. During chemotherapy, I want you to focus on these three fuels for your body. We recommend that you sleep for eight hours at night and to allow yourself to take naps during the day if needed. Your body needs this time to rest and recuperate from fighting your cancer. To stay hydrated, we encourage you to drink 64 ounces of water every day. It's completely fine for you to drink coffee, tea, or soda during chemotherapy. Just remember that it doesn't count towards your 64 ounce water goal. When it comes to food, my biggest concern is to make sure that you're eating. A variety of fruits and vegetables and lean protein would be great, but the bottom line is that food is fuel. There's definitely better fuel out there, but ultimately your body needs calories to function. Drastic changes to your diet can be difficult during treatment, so I encourage you to eat what sounds and tastes good to you. Having said that, I would recommend that you be careful about eating spicy, fried, or rich foods as these can cause stomach upset in some patients. Just try a little and see how you feel before eating a full serving. Additionally, for food safety, we recommend that you wash fruits and vegetables before eating and only eat meat and eggs that are well done. If you have any questions about a specific diet, feel free to talk to your doctor or nurse. In addition to keeping you fueled, having food in your stomach can decrease nausea. We recommend that you snack in between meals to keep your calories up and also to prevent the queasiness that can accompany an empty stomach. Your doctor will give you a prescription to take if you do feel nauseated. It's important to get this filled right away and to carry it with you. If you feel sick to your stomach, take your prescription as directed on the label. If this medicine isn't working for you, please call us. We have an array of medications that can be used and we want to make sure that the medication you have at home provides relief. If vomiting occurs, please call us immediately so that we can get you feeling better quickly. Since we're talking about your stomach, let's also briefly talk about your bowels. I know that some patients can find it uncomfortable to talk about this, but it's really important for your doctor to know if you're experiencing any stomach issues. Some chemotherapy medications can cause constipation while others can cause diarrhea, but both can cause problems if they're not addressed. If you've not had a bowel movement in the last two days, you need to call us so that we can get your stomach moving again. If diarrhea occurs, dehydration is a real concern. If you're having liquid to watery stools, you need to call us. Again, our goal is to take care of your symptoms quickly so that you can feel as well as possible during your treatments. Please don't hesitate to call if you have any new symptoms or questions. 
let's move on to your skin and hair. In general, chemotherapy can make your body drier and more sensitive. Products that come into contact with your skin, like soap and detergent, may cause irritation. To prevent this, make sure to use sensitive skin products and to apply lotion daily. If you're going to be outside in the sun, make sure to wear sunscreen or protective clothing, like hats and long sleeves, to protect your skin. If you develop a rash or a sunburn, please call us so that we can treat it and make sure a skin infection doesn't develop. In regards to your hair, some chemotherapies can cause hair thinning or hair loss, while others may not. Your doctor or nurse will let you know if the medication you're receiving is expected to cause hair loss. If hair loss is expected, it typically occurs 14 to 21 days after your first treatment. If you would like to have a wig, let your doctor know and we can give you a prescription. Some insurance companies will cover this cost, so always ask before you buy. After you finish your treatment, we typically see hair growth returning in two to three months. However, it can take six to 12 months for a good foundation. During this time, I recommend that you don't use chemicals on your hair, such as hair dyes or perms, as these can slow or halt your hair growth. To wrap things up, let's review what we've talked about. Remember that you could be at risk for an infection, so wash your hands often and avoid being around anyone who's sick. Call early with any signs of an infection. Make sure to keep your tank full by getting lots of rest, drinking 64 ounces of water every day, and keeping up your nutrition. Remember to fill your anti-nausea prescription and to carry it with you. Take this medication at the first sign of nausea and call us if it's not working. Keep up with your stomach habits and call the office if you're constipated or having diarrhea. Use sensitive skin products and apply lotion daily. And remember, our goal is to stay on top of your symptoms. If you have any questions or you're not feeling well, we want you to call us anytime, seven days a week, 24 hours a day. We're always here to answer your questions. For more information, please visit our website.